Hi, Nigel Saunders for KW Bonsai. I was uh, pruning this ficus down and I was getting ready to take it in for the winter and I noticed that on the roots there were little bumps uh, and these are caused by root nematodes. They're little tiny microscopic worms that go into your root system and the tree causes a gall around the the worm so it causes little bumps on the roots um, so I'm a little scared I, I'm not sure where these nematodes came from whether it was in my soil or whether it was always in this tree so I'm not sure so what I'm gonna do today as a, a precaution I'm gonna repot my uh, my large fig tree and we're going to check the root system for any nematodes in it and we're going to clean the pot and put new soil in. We're going to sterilize the soil and uh, as a precautionary uh, measure uh, to keep them out of this fig tree. So we're going to deal with this one later, uh, what we're going to do with this tree. Uh, you have two options. You can throw the tree away and make sure either burn it or seal it up and put it in the garbage. Or uh, we can try trimming all the bumps off the roots and try and grow a new root system with it. So we're going to try and keep the tree. Uh, we're going to go in later and uh, clean up the root system and try and get rid of these nematodes in the roots. So here's a close-up view of these bumps caused by these nematode worms. You can see them on the aerial roots here. And that's where I noticed them. So we'll deal with that tree later, but uh, we're just gonna repot my ficus and uh, to ensure it doesn't get them and hopefully it doesn't have them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean our work area and our tools. So what I'm going to do is I've got some bleach and we're going to pour that on there. Yeah. And then we're going to clean our bench top down. like so. Then we're going to clean our tools. So we're going to pour some bleach in here and get our tools and give them all a, a cleaning. And this will uh, make sure they're clean for our repotting procedure. And you should do this every time you prune a tree, is you should uh, clean your tools. Because if, uh, you know, a tree does have a disease or something, you won't pass it on to your, the next tree you prune. Now, it doesn't happen very often, but it's good to, you know, be cautious. It's like doing an operation on a person, you know. You wouldn't operate without sterilizing your tools and using disinfectants. So the same things with bonsai. Okay, so they're good and clean. We'll just rinse them off. So the next step is we want to do the same for the pot. So this is the pot we're going to put the tree in and I'm going to do the same thing for that. I'm going to clean it with bleach. That way if there are any eggs from, from these uh, worms, we'll kill them. And 
you want to clean every part of the pot. So the bottom of it, the top, the insides, get inside all the holes. Bleach is probably not very good for your hands, so I should uh, I should be wearing gloves. So get all around your feet, anywhere where it could harbor eggs or harmful things, critters. And I'll give the inside another scrub down. There we go. So then we'll just rinse the pot in the water. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is uh, the soil we put in the pot, we want to make sure it's sterilized. So there's two ways you can do that. Well, there's three ways, but um, the first is you can uh, spread your soil out in between two layers of black plastic in the sunlight, and you'll get enough solar energy that it'll cook the soil and kill probably 99% of everything living in it. Uh, the second way is you can bake your soil on a barbecue or in an oven. Uh, make sure it's heated up well. You probably want to heat it up to at least uh, 180 degrees. You don't want it too hot, but uh, you know. And the third way is to microwave it. So you know you can get your soil, put it in a plastic bag, stick it in the microwave, microwave it for you know, three or four minutes, and that'll kill everything in the soil. And uh, it kills all the beneficial bacteria in the soil also, but uh, from what I've been reading is that uh, that beneficial bacteria and fungus and everything returns to the soil fairly quickly. It, it comes in as spores in the air. It's in the water that you water on your your trees uh, so I wouldn't worry about you know using a sterile soil it, it quickly repopulates with uh, all the beneficial bacteria and fungi and things that break down the organic matter which then creates the nutrients that the tree uses so that's the next step we're gonna sterilize our soil okay so I'm I've got some plastic bags and we're going to fill them with enough soil to repot the ficus tree. So I'm just going to fill our bags up. And this soil I'm using is, uh, it's about uh, probably 60% turfus and about uh, 20% uh, pine bark and about 20%
composted sheep manure. So, it's, uh, and it's all sifted through screens to get rid of all the fine particles. And it works pretty good. Um, as long as you water and fertilize correctly, you'll get good results. So there's, uh, I don't know how much I'm going to need for this. That'll do for one bag. And we'll just uh, set that down and fill a second bag up. And because, uh, you know, when you do buy organic matter, uh, you don't know what's in it. Uh, it. It can be full of weeds, it can be full of good things, it can be full of bad things, so sterilizing the soil will remedy that problem. Okay, so I'm going to take these in and stick them in the microwave and cook it, and I'll be back in a little bit. Uh, I cooked the soil for about uh, six minutes in the microwave on high heat and it warmed up somewhat but not too hot. So I'll just let that cool down and we'll start repotting the tree. Okay so here's our ficus. Um, I've got my water and I've got my tools for repotting. So the first step we'll get the tree out of the pot. So let's just see if it lifts out. Oh it's pretty heavy. There we go. There's our drainage layer in the bottom of the pot. We'll take that away. That's just a plastic training pot. And we'll start by combing out the roots. So we'll start at the top and comb in our radial direction away from the trunk. And hopefully, we're not going to find any bumps on our roots from root nematodes. If we do, we'll have to cut them all off, all the bumps. And if you have a severe case, you're basically going to have to cut all the roots off the tree and replant it as a large cutting. So far I'm not seeing any, which is good. I'm hoping it was just an isolated case with the one, uh, the one tree. But we're just gonna repot it and make sure. Now this tree didn't really need repotting. My intention was to let it grow in this container for at least another year probably or so. However, it won't hurt to repot it. And I, I'm going to put it in a, I'm putting it in that shallow pot. It wasn't a fairly deep training pot. Just a uh, grow the roots, but I found with the trees in the greenhouse, the shallow pots work really well. You don't get that surface evaporation from the pots. It just keeps it more humid. So the old soil, um, you can reuse it, but again, you should microwave it just so if there are any problems in the soil, you'll get rid of them. So I'm going to continue to, to uh, rake the roots out. And when we're done the top raking, I'll come back and we'll start raking up the bottom of the root system. Okay, so I've got the, the top of the root ball raked out. So we're going to flip the tree over and start on the bottom. And again, we're going to 
rake outwards in a radial pattern from the center of the tree outwards. The soil's fairly wet. Um, we did have some rain, but it's still a little wetter than I would like, so. In the shallower pot, we're gonna have a little less organic matter and a little more turfus. screens. So we're getting there. And again, by combing in a radial pattern, you're only going to tear the crossing roots so the good radial roots that you want to keep will stay intact and we try not to tear the roots but you always get some tearing so our objective for the roots is to get this flat on the bottom and a nice radial root base so everything fans out and we're getting there so I don't see any problems in these roots with uh, root nematodes nematodes I don't see any bumps nothing out of the ordinary which is good because I was a little scared when I saw them on that one ficus tree I was scared that I would have them on all, but so that's you know the reason I'm repotting today is just to make sure we don't have any problems in these roots. Okay, so the next job we're, we're going to wash the roots and uh, make sure they're nice and clean, and then we'll go in and do any root pruning that we need to do. So I'm going to wash the roots in this water. Now this water does have some bleach in it, which uh, it's very mild. It won't uh, won't hurt the tree, hopefully. So here we go. Okay, so the next step will be putting it back on the bench. So again, we're going to wipe our bench down with some bleach. We'll just rinse the chlorine off. As I've said in my other videos, uh, every pot has a front and a back. So we're going to look at this pot and just see which is the nicest side. And again, things I'm looking for is the glaze. On this side, the glaze is a little high. It shows the foot a little too much, so. The other side of the pot is the front. First thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna place the tree in the pot and just do sort of a test fitting to it. The tree's a little wobbly. We're just gonna look at these roots underneath. Uh -huh. So we're going to go in and we're going to trim off any roots growing down. There's a couple here. Again, we want all the radial roots feeding the trunk and that'll cause your trunk to get taper and flare at the root base. That's not too bad. The rest of the roots look pretty good. The next thing we're going to do is just give it a, a quick trim to try and equalize the roots. So 
the ones that have grown strongly will get trimmed off and the ones that aren't growing as strongly will remain the size they are. That looks pretty good. There's lots of room for the roots to grow. Just having a look at them here. Yeah, I don't see any don't see any major problems with the roots. They're growing in a nice radial pattern. We're getting uh, some ramification in the roots. I pruned some of these ones back quite hard last time I repotted it and they've Got a lot of new roots coming out from the cut points, which are growing well. Okay, so I think everything's good. So we're going to get the pot ready for putting the tree in now. So I'm just cutting some drainage screens, place over the holes in the bottom of the pot. I just use the uh, plastic window screen. Seems to work just fine. Some people use a larger screen size, but uh, I've never had a problem with this finer size clogging up or anything. Okay, so I've got the uh, I've got the holes covered with the screens now. And the next step is uh, we're going to put in a layer of uh, a drainage layer in the bottom of the pot. Very thin, but uh, just enough. Every uh, every pot doesn't have a perfectly flat bottom. Uh, if the tree's on a bench and it's on a slight tilt, you'll get water pooling in one area at the bottom of the pot that won't drain out properly. So it's always good to have like a, a coarser drainage layer in the bottom. That way, the water in the bottom of the pot has more air around it and it'll evaporate and won't uh, keep one side of the tree wetter than the other side. So my drainage layer is just sifted turfus. Um, so when you place it in, just I don't wire my screens in either. Um, once the soil's in place, they don't go anywhere. There we go. And we'll just level that out. Again, it's just a thin layer, especially in these shallow pots. You don't want too thick a too thick a drainage layer because uh, you won't have any room for your soil. So there we go. You can see it's uh, got a nice layer there. So the next thing to do is uh, we're going to add our soil. We're going to put a layer of soil and build it up in the middle and put the tree in the pot. Our, our soil's still warm, our sterilized soil, but it's not too bad. So we're just going to add an even layer to the pot. Again, we're going to mound it up in the middle where the tree goes. But not too high. So let's, uh, let's try it out now. Move that in the middle. So we, the front of the tree um,
is right about here. Right about here, I'd say. So if we place the tree in the pot, what we want to do is get the height of the tree a good level above the lip of the pot. So right now, it's pretty high. And there's not a lot we can do about it. We can uh, shift it down a bit there. And again, because this is a symmetrically styled tree, uh, we want to place it pretty well on center of the pot. Uh, if, it, if it had more foliage on one side, which was deliberate the way you styled it, you might want to offset that in the pot. But because it's a symmetrical canopy, we want to put it in the middle of the pot pretty well. You don't have to be exactly in the middle of the pot, but. And I'm just looking at the planting angle too. Um, probably about there is ideal. And from the side, not too bad either. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little more soil on this side to tilt it back slightly. That's not too bad there. I'm going to go back and have a look at it from way back here. Yeah, it's not too bad. I'll just bring the camera around to the front here so you can see exactly where it is. Yeah, so here we are at the front of the pot and the tree. And the planting looks pretty good. Could be maybe tilted towards the uh, right hand side a bit. Let me just do that. Rip it out again. More soil on this side. And again, I'll come back and have a look at it. Yeah, that looks better. The main, the thick, it has a twin trunk. The main thicker trunk is a little more vertical there, which looks good. The tree looks more balanced. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So, before we start putting our, filling the pot with soil, we just want to make sure all our roots are in place. So we're going to do a final raking out of all these roots, make sure they're not crossing and as the tree gets older these roots will thicken up. So you want to make sure they're in the right place while the tree's young. Pretty good. Now, I do have the tree towards the back of the pot more, and uh, the reason for that is it gives a little more 
room for soil at the front. It gives it more of that, that it's not cramped in the pot look. So it's always best to shift the trees towards the back a little more because you don't see that. And it just gives that feeling it looks good in the pot or it's comfortable in the pot. So we do have one root that's kind of sticking up a little high here. And I think I'm gonna to have to cut that off. I'll just go in and show you what that looks like. So let's just go in and have a look at that root. Um, right here, it kind of curves up, which isn't good. There are some other roots coming off it, and there's another root going over this direction. So I think we're going to have to cut that off. That's, uh, sorry. Yeah, we're going to have to cut this one off and get the roots to grow down into the soil more. That's just going to stick up. So we'll do that now. Okay, so that root that was sticking up, I've just cut it off. That was it here. Um, I filled the card on the camera, so it, it cut off before I actually cut the root, so kind of missed that. But uh, So I, I downloaded the card and we're back in business here. Um, so yeah, so from that cut point we'll get roots growing down more into the soil and it won't stick out like it did before. So the next job, um, we've got everything raked out, we're ready to put our soil in. So we're going to do that. Now, the tree's quite high in the pot. Um, a lot of these roots, you know, are way above the lip of the pot, which, which is alright because they do go down into the soil, so they're not going to die. So as these roots thicken up, they'll become surface roots. So I think everything that way is okay. So let's, uh, let's get our sterilized soil now. And we'll start filling it in. So again, even though this tree didn't need repotting, um, I can sleep better at night now knowing that I've got sterilized soil, I don't have any root nematodes in my tree. And we did a little bit of root sorting out. So, Repotting is always good. Even if you don't touch the roots and you just repot into fresh soil, the tree will grow better. And it looks like I mixed up plenty of, or I sterilized plenty of soil. I'm don't even think I'm going to use the one bag up, so that's good. Okay, so next thing we got to do is work all the soil into the roots. So you can use anything that kind of gets it down and all fills all the pockets of air. Now normally I like to leave the, uh, I like to have the soil level with the lip of the pot or just slightly below, but um, 
we will have to do some mounding in the center of this tree just because you know these surface roots are quite high We will want to expose them all eventually as the tree gets a little more mature. But at this stage, we just want to keep them all alive for starters. So you can kind of test um, when you wiggle your tree, if you're getting all the soil in around the roots, they become pretty stable in the pot. They don't, they don't shake around or anything. There's still quite a few pockets in here, and I'm starting to fill up with soil. We're going to need a little more soil around that area and around the base of the trunk. We're getting there. All the pockets are starting to fill up. Uh, on the channel, I've started a uh, playlist called Healthy Trees. And on that playlist, I'm going to add videos on, uh, you know, general tree care, um, any you know, how to deal with problems with trees, like, you know, insects, scale insects, uh, aphids, root nematodes, any problems you might have with your tree, I'm gonna add them to the playlist uh, called Healthy Trees. And, you know, as I get more problems with trees, I'll be doing more research on how to solve them and how to avoid them. And, uh, If you have the same problem, you can just access it in that playlist. About, uh, about 10 years ago, I had uh, boring insects attack my trees. Um, they came in and killed about 60% of my trees within about two days. Uh, they came in, uh, I first noticed a little hole in one of my maples and there's some sawdust coming out of it. And the reason I noticed it was the tree suddenly all the leaves went limp on it. And I thought, oh, it needs water. And it had plenty of water in the pot. The soil was moist and I thought oh what's going on so I had a look at the tree and I saw that little hole with the sawdust and uh, yeah by then it was too late I uh, you know the tree died very quickly and uh, you know so I did a lot of research on boring insects and <laughs> there's not a lot you can do for them now that's the only time I've had them attack my trees and you know, growing bonsai trees for 20 years. However, I did lose like, uh, you know, I did lose a lot of trees and they attacked everything, larches, maples, ashes. So, you know, you will get setbacks in bonsai over the years. Nice and firm in the pot. These surface roots are in the soil, so that's good. I think we're pretty close to being done. The last step will be to water the tree. Okay, so I've got all the soil worked in, and uh, 
level and the tree's nice and firm. So the last thing we're going to do is give it a watering. Well, maybe it's not the last thing we're going to do. Um, I am, before I take it inside for the winter, I'm going to give it a spray with soap and water just to make sure there's no insects on it. And it's a good idea to do that before you bring your trees inside. Is uh, Give them a spray down. So the water is draining really nicely in the new soil. Not pooling up or anything. And you, once you've watered it, you just give it a double check, make sure the soil is all good in contact, there's no air pockets. And again, with the ficus tree, the roots will grow in the air. So if you do have air pockets in your soil, you know, little ones, it doesn't hurt. The roots will grow as long as they stay moist. So there we go, we've, uh, we've done our watering. Water's coming out nice and clear out of the drainage holes. No dust in the soil, it's all, it's all good. Soil's sterile, trees should grow really well. Um, yeah, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna get some soap and water and spray the tree. So I'll do that now, I'll um, get my spray bottle. Uh, the soap to water ratio is usually 40 parts water to one part soap and I just use uh, dish detergent soap so the liquid soap and uh, yeah you just uh, spray it all over the trees under under the leaves on top of the leaves the trunk everything just to make sure all the crawling insects are uh, killed you know you'll uh, kill aphids you'll kill scale insects white fly, anything, that, anything that's living on the tree, basically. So we'll do that next. Dandelions come over to help us out here, see? Yes. He's getting bigger. There's the camera, Dandelion. Hi, how's it going, little fella? Yeah, he's my helper for today, I guess. Okay, so I've mixed up our soap and water and we're gonna spray the tree. So we're just gonna start from the underside. And it doesn't hurt the roots, uh, so don't worry about it dripping down into the soil. And we're gonna, we're gonna rinse it all off anyway. So we're just getting around the back, so. And then we'll start at the top and work down from the top. And you should spray your trees um, with soap and water whenever you notice any problems. And uh, so if you notice aphids or scale, you want to start your spraying program. So spray it every, you know, every four days for a period of, uh, you know, a couple of weeks, and you'll get rid of you get rid of all your problems. So that's pretty good. And then you want to leave the soap and water on for a few minutes. Um, I've let it uh, sit for a couple of minutes with the soap and water on it. And it's time to rinse it off now. So we'll just start from the top.
and I'll use uh, I'll use two watering cans to you know make sure all the soaps rinsed off thoroughly. That is one clean tree. We've uh, there we go. And I'll give that another watering can later on. Um, so there's the tree. We've got it uh, sterilized soil in it. We've cleaned all our pots, all our tools with uh, bleach. Uh, we wash the roots in a mild bleach bath. We've cleaned the top with soap and water. So there shouldn't be any problems with insects on this tree for a while. Um, the next thing is when it's time to put it in the plant room, I'll, I'll bring it in the plant room. And you want to keep your trees fairly clean. So don't have, uh, you know, pools of water underneath them or anything that you know bugs and that could transfer from one tree to another you don't want your trees touching each other because bugs from one tree can go to another uh, so give each tree its own space and keep your growing area fairly clean and uh, you shouldn't have too many problems with you know bugs and insects so there we go that's it for today we've uh, repotted our tree. I'm glad we didn't find any uh, root nematodes in it. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it should grow well for for a good long time now. Uh, so we'll, re we'll be repotting this probably um, probably not, and not for another year now. Uh, so it'll probably be fall of uh, 2015 that will repot this. Um, I will talk a little about the styling of this tree. Um, uh, a good mature ficus look. Uh, I've said before that you, you want the width of the tree to be twice as wide as the height of the tree. So right now I have I have another I'm about halfway to the width of the tree. So, you know, eventually this pot may look ridiculously small. Uh, I might need a bigger pot. Uh, and the color of this pot isn't ideal either. Uh, ideally, you would like, uh, you know, an earth color or something closer to you know the darker areas of the trunk sort of a uh, a darker green than this maybe a more of a dark olive green color uh, however this is the only nice large size pot I have uh, so that's the reason I've got it in this pot um, yeah I'll, uh, I'll show you a photo uh, I did a little Photoshop work on the tree just to see what it'll look like when it's uh, you know got better proportions and uh, I was playing around with uh, what the pot will eventually look like underneath it so before we go we'll have a look at that so here's the the ficus photoshopped so you can see I've got the width is twice the height of the tree and I haven't changed the trunk to get any thicker or anything in this photo and I've put a large shallow oval pot of uh, kind of a dark brown color underneath it and uh, so this kind of gives me a rough idea of uh, where I want to go with the styling of the tree. Here's Dandelion. 
Hi. Come on, are you coming up to see me? Dandelion. He's burying a nut down there. Here he comes. Hello. Hi. Hi, big guy. How are you doing? You're probably... A... <laughs> you want to play, do you? <laughs> He's in a playful mood. You watch this. <laughs> here he goes. <laughs> Where'd he go now? There he is over here. I see you. Oh, there he goes. He's zipping about. He's coming back to attack me. Oh, he's got me. Oh, he's got me. He's coming back. He's oh, he's, oh, he's gonna get me. Oh, I got you. Come here, dandelion. Oh, he's a vicious killer squirrel. I'm going to get you, dandelion. Oh, ha, ha, I got you. This time I've got you. He zipped away again. Come here. Oh, he's a rascal. Oh, he's I got your belly. Where is he? He's over here now. He's over here. He's hiding from me. He's hiding. <laughs> Dandelion. <laughs> oh, you got me. He's coming back. Ah, get you again. I'm going to get you. I got your tum tum. I'm going to get your tum tum. <laughs> Where'd he go now? Where'd you go? Oh, there he is. Oh, I got your belly. Oh, I'm gonna get you. Oh. <laughs> ah, he's attacking me again. He's attacking me again. I'm gonna get you. Yeah. <laughs> there. Oh, he bit me. He bit me. Where is he? Oh, here he comes again. Oh, no, he's taking off. Here he comes. Ah, he's got me. He's got me again. <laughs> Oh, he's disappeared. He's behind me. He's behind me. There he is. Oh, I'm going to get him. He's coming back. Oh, he's that big jump attack. Oh, that flip. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Woo. <laughs> wow, there, I got you. I'm going to pull your tail. I got your tail. See, that fluffy tail of yours. Now, where's he gone? Oh, here he is. He's coming back. He's jumping. I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> He's coming back again. No? What's he gonna do? So that's it. So, Nigel Saunders for KW Bonsai. We'll see you next time.